<laughs> All right, everybody, we're back for the last third of the Caldwell Eastern Standard. And we are joined now by Robert Caldwell and Jeremy McDonald from Caldwell Cigars. How are you guys doing? Well, thank you. Doing well, and you? Doing fantastic. Great thank cigar, you for guys. Yeah, great cigar. Thank I'm you. really enjoying it. It is darn tasty, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Caldwell Cigars. What do you want to know about Caldwell Cigars? Everything, man. I mean, I know where you came from and why you started it, but I wanted to hear your, your concept of the company, what you're bringing to the market that's different, um, where you see yourself you know, going cigar-wise, just the overall concept of the, the brand. So, well, the whole idea behind Caldwell, when I left my prior uh, partnership, I was very skeptical uh, kind of to return to the industry because I thought what I did with Winwood was so cool because it was such a – it was so much more than a brand. It was like, it was a we were the, I was the pioneer of the Winwood neighborhood, which is like a run-down part of Miami. The factory got tons of attention locally. It was a very cool thing. And, uh, I mean, we did something very different and very special. So I was very skeptical of coming back with something. And I kind of uh, I went back down to DR probably about three or four days after I had uh, kind of rescinded my partnership and started playing with tobacco. And I actually started blending cigars about seven years ago, having no idea what I was doing. But I'd encountered some really special tobaccos when I was down there. So I started revisiting them. And then uh, the concept kind of grew. And actually, it, probably about three months later is when I really decided to do it. And really, it was just I, I had great people around me that were willing to work with me and believed in me. And uh, I had tons of customers. I think I had something like 50 customers reach out to me in the month after I left saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? So I thought I should do something. Um, and my team in DR is fantastic. Uh, the majority of our tobacco comes from Leo Reyes, who's a big grower down there. They've been growing for about 100 years. Very special, rare, nice tobaccos. And then we have a great factory that's called Tabacalera William Ventura. And uh, just the top quality, I mean, top, top, top quality construction. So that kind of was the right mix. And then I had here in the States the right team going. So it was really down to concept at that point. But once I made the cigars, I started sampling and, and knew I had something, then it all kind of fell in place. But the whole idea behind our company is just to have fun. And I mean, yeah, we want to make money, but we want to have fun first. And kind of my position with all my employees is, look, if we build something great that everybody remembers 30 years down the line, that's one thing. But I want to do enough that 30 years down the line, everybody that works with me remembers what we did. That's cool, man. It's a great way to come at it because you want to have fun with whatever you do, I think. is you know That's the American dream or any dream, really, is to have fun doing what you love. And you guys sound like you're definitely doing that. Um, I love the, the artwork that you guys have on the site and the concept of using those... Uh, old-timey photos and sticking your faces in there and just it seems like that's a great idea that I hadn't really seen before and the baseball cards are epic man the baseball cards for the for the business cards is way cool what what brought you to that well the artwork is a variety of uh, people one the, the all the all the premium line stuff is done by an artist uh, that goes by the name of Evoca one he did a lot of work with me at Winwood he kinda just stumbled in the factory one day now he's a top 10 worldwide street artist he's a very good friend of mine so I gave him the names of the brands because I had the brand names first, and then he kind of developed those concepts. And then we're lucky to have everybody that works with us for the most part is a creative. So Jacqueline, she did sales for us in Florida, does their events, but she does a lot of our marketing. So all of that stuff is hers. And then um, it was just like, what can we do to engage people? So the business cards were actually my idea. It was the first thing I thought of. You go into cigar stores, that's, that's modern-day cheers for Americans. So we go and we sit down smoke cigars but what you find there is you find a lot of guys that aren't really social they're a little bit reserved and what i noticed in my travels is that i go into a store and oftentimes i'm intimidating or a rep can be intimidating to a customer there they're bashful they don't want to ask you questions so it was something that we could do that would just initiate contact with a customer so all my guys hand out cards to everybody in the store it has some stupid statistics on the back that are meant to be conversation starters just to break the ice so it's a way for us to get more personal with the end consumer and kind of eliminate that fear. And it's a weird thing because why would you be scared of a rep? But a lot of guys are good, and it is an intimidating uh, thing to have a cigar rep come in, you know, depending where you are. I mean, New England, you might not have that issue, but certain parts of the South and Midwest, guys get a little a little shy. Well, everybody in yeah. Texas is packing, so, yeah, they're definitely um, a little go. more. Uh... Are you guys in Texas? Yeah, yeah, we're over in Texas, yeah. Was that a dick joke? 
I found that in this industry, at least in Texas, uh, we actually enjoy when the reps come by as opposed to other businesses I've worked in. When you see a rep, you're like, oh, crap, there's a rep. But uh, here in Texas, we welcome and embrace all our reps. It's it's interesting to find out that there are some stores that are shy. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah weird. There's some kind of uh, interesting parts of the country. You just have that. You know, you walk in, everybody's real shy. They don't want to talk to you. And it's it's not necessarily that they don't want to talk to you, but they're just very timid people. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to kind of bring that out. Yeah, Texas doesn't have that problem. So tell me a little bit about the, the different cigars that you guys have right now. You have the, the King is Dead, Long Live the King, and the one we're smoking, the Eastern Standard. Um, what was the concept with the names of those? And using the, you used a, um, a very unique wrapper, from what I understand, the Negrito, which is um, not the easiest thing to blend with. What was the, the idea there working with that, taking that challenge? So actually, that's the first cigar that I ever worked on. I started playing with that tobacco about seven, six years ago, something like that. Um, and I started, I, 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 my background is actually making cigars for upscale hotels. So I started out making cigars for Four Seasons, W Hotel, stuff like that. Not as a private label, but as a true micro, micro batch. So we blend cigars for them, custom packaging labels. That's something I kind of fell into. Um, so that was a tobacco that I tried years ago in DR, and I smoked it just pure Negrito, and I thought it was the most unique flavor profile of anything I tasted, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't burn. So, and then I blended it with stuff, and then when you blended it, it tasted really bad. So it was something that I revisited um, this time around, and I've been wanting to work with it actually at Wynwood, um, but I never had the opportunity. So that was the first thing I went back to when I had to have a Negrito cigar. So we made that work. I think pretty well, and they, I, the names behind it, I, my original concept was to have a cigar which you could smoke immediately after the other one. So sometimes you'll smoke a cigar, and it's great, and then you smoke a cigar right behind it, and that cigar is even better because the first one was affected your palate in that way. So the idea for King is Dead Long Live the King was to smoke them sequentially. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really work. They taste good on their own. Who cares? But it's kind of this dumb idea that I had, um, and I just thought the names were amazing. So I kept the names, killed the concept, and then that those became the brands. Um, and then uh, Eastern Standard is uh, is the, another one. That was something that I was actually originally not going to release at all. I, I was afraid that it would be too light because I love I, I like mild to medium cigars. I like a mild, a full flavored mild cigar or like a medium medium plus cigar. Eastern to me is weird because it's got all the flavor and the depth of flavor you'd expect from something that's full body but it's smooth and cream. And everybody that I sampled that cigar to is like, you've got to make this cigar. And I'm like, I don't want to come out with something light, but that's been a real interesting uh, cigar to have in our portfolio because the, the feedback's been, guys are like, oh, it's a full, full body Connecticut, which is impossible. But it, the thing is, it's got so much richness and depth to it that it, that it smokes full body without the body, I guess. So, and uh, the name off that was coincidental. I was looking for a name. Saw it on a cocktail list and said, hey, shit, it's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> so where'd the picture come from of the, the dude on the cigar? What was the idea for that? So my friend who was, who was this artist, I gave him the names, and then he's the one that actually developed the artwork for them. So he, he drew or painted each one. And at Eastern Standard, he developed it to be, I mean, who knows? You say Eastern Standard, it's a time zone, it's whatever it is. But he saw it to be kind of like a Russian, most interesting man in the world looking figure. So that's what <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought when I saw it too. Yeah, yeah so, very cool. Yeah, and then King is dead. He took uh, this chair that I sat in at Wynwood, and he broke it in half and put it on the label, which I thought was pretty cool. And then along yeah. the, the juvenile King. Originally, it was a very young boy with a huge crown that was falling on his face, but then we had a little pushback because uh, our original logo had two children on bicycles and yeah, and like that. So then we we decided to make the kid nineteen. Instead of, so he's legal to smoke in every state. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. So, uh, Jeremy, I hear you're you're kind of a, a gourmet guy. You like um, gourmet stuff. What do you, what's your, what do you pair with cigars? Do you pair certain foods or drinks? You know what? It all depends on the cigar, the blend. I mean, I love whiskeys, uh, micro brews, coffees. Uh, some cigars, it's just water. It really just depends upon the blend. Um, I obviously have some preferences with, like the Eastern Standard, 
I very much enjoy like Irish whiskeys with it, and I love like uh, coffees and Ethiopian blend. Um, the fruitier they they bring out the fruit notes, and it just tends to complement the cigar really well. You know, obviously it's a personal preference, but it's something that I very much enjoy doing. I just find that it enhances the cigar and and the beverage you're drinking. Yeah, I could easily see this being an Irish whiskey cigar. It, I, as soon as you said that, it was like, yeah, that, that would go well with this. That yeah. works. Yeah. I recommend Jameson Gold Label with this. Okay. Gold Label, huh? I didn't even know they had a gold label. Yep. Apparently they do. Apparently they do. <laughs> <laughs> we probably can't afford it, though. <laughs> probably not, yeah. <laughs> We're, so you guys have um, a, a budget line, or I say I can't really say it's a budget line, but you have another line that's coming out, or that is out currently, the Junior Varsity. So yes. where where is that um, fitting in with the line? What was the idea there? So the factory that we're working with, two things. First of all, everything that they made us tasted very good. It was very medium uh, size. We actually blended and purchased all of our own tobaccos because um, we wanted something very unique. But when we went to them, they're like, this is what we make. And I was like, that's good shit. It's very good shit, but it's not what we wanted, you know? And love them to death. They kind of are, are in this tunnel zone of flavor profile. So they have a very successful brand in Dominican Republic that they sell locally. And that's what this brand was kind of built off of. So we took what they make. We modified it slightly. I mean, honestly, we just made everything a little bit stronger for the American market. And then we changed the sizing. So they had a lot of Panatellas and Petite Coronas and things that I love. But we had to add the Toros and the 60s and stuff to that line. So the concept behind it, I mean, they're great cigars, everyday price point. We go 460 to 690 on those products. And uh, it's just something that you can smoke every day. I smoke some of them. I like all the Corona sizes I think are fantastic. Uh, the Robusto Gibraltar I think is great. The Toro Murcias I think is great. But that's all I smoke. I smoke the three Coronas. It, you know, there are, some of them aren't even Coronas. It's a, like a hybridized petite Corona type size. But... I think they're great, and for the money, you can't beat them. I mean, I just think they're phenomenal smoke. So you have a lot of markets where you go in, or just stores in general. I mean, not everybody earns enough income to be able to support a $10 cigar habit. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that need a four and a half, five dollars cigar. So we put them in 10-count boxes. They retail for 46 on a box. It's a brilliant price point. Uh, we launched that along with the other uh, the Caldwell Collection. We launched in California in 10 stores, and we realized the first month that we wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand. And it's funny because it's the silent, uh, the kind of, it's kind of like the silent sales thing. Like we don't pay much attention to it, but it's it sells, you know. And we've had a lot of really positive feedback on it. A lot of guys are like, "How can you call this Junior Varsity? Fuck you!" They take it very personally that we kind of minimize that brand. But the whole concept is like, look, you got your starters and you got your bench warmers. Bench warmers can be good, you know. And everything that I make is too strong. If I was going to light a cigar at 9 in the morning, nothing that I make on the Cabo Collection is light enough for me to enjoy. Because I like my first cigar to be mild or true medium. Eastern, to me, has too much spice to smoke the minute I wake up. And I'm not a get out of bed and light a cigar guy, but when I'm on the road, get up and go out at 9 in the morning, I got a cigar in my mouth, and I smoke Sevillana or Gibraltar. So they, they offer a lot of different things to the portfolio. I think the most interesting are probably Gibraltar, because it's such a unique taste it's just such a I think it's such a balanced cigar and then um, the Morcias the uh, San Andres Maduro first of all the price point on that cigar to get a San Andres right at five bucks is crazy and then secondly most blenders put San Andres over Nicaraguan tobacco makes it taste very strong so they associate San Andres Maduro as a powerhouse and mm -hmm. that tobacco is not a strong tobacco so we put it over all Dominican filler and binder which Guys smoke it and they're like, what am I tasting? I'm like, you're tasting San Andres. So it's interesting because there's very little in that cigar that affects the wrapper. So when you smoke it, you really taste what that wrapper is, which is a very interesting uh, profile. It's going outside the box and doing something different with San Andres, which is awesome, man. You know, there's not a lot of people doing that. So appreciate what you guys are doing for sure. Bringing the Dominicans in and, and doing something different with them is, is awesome. Thank you. I got a weird question for you. All right. What would you rather be? A pirate? Or a ninja? Pirate. Pirate. Okay. That's him. What about you, Jeremy? This is the pirate. Pirate. Anybody. Pirate. Pirate. Oh, pirates. No ninjas. Right. So, so for clarification, are we talking about uh, pirates of the sea or pirates of the internet? Ooh, that's a good question. No, pirates of the sea, of course. They're the cooler ones. I'm asking for clarification for those that answered. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, pirate. I'd go, I'd go ninja, but that's just me. I don't know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Who would win in the fight? Um, it's okay. Well, the pirate buddy's probably going to jump in there, so right. maybe the pirate? <laughs> well, the ninja you probably wouldn't see coming, though, right? I don't know, man. You guys that's notice how Jerry doesn't know how this thing works, and he's right, right in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know if you guys understand this or not, but um, you guys are blowing up in the cigar forums. I mean, I haven't seen a cigar that has come out that's blown up that fast in the forums as the Caldwell cigars. I mean, you go into Stogie Friends, you go into BOTL, you go into a lot of the different forums that are out there, and everybody's talking about your cigars. Do you guys do a lot of cross-marketing with the uh, new media, or is it just that they're smoking them and they love them? I think they smoke them. I mean, it's interesting because our, I mean, when I was with Winwood, I, I had a lot of resources that are not cigar resources, so it was weird because I was at Winwood and Lincoln, the car company, came down and collaborated with me. And I became, I don't even know what the hell, they had a video of my factory on the Lincoln automobile website, so I reached out and I had a lot of non-traditional media going with that. However, with that project, I had a partner that did this and I had a full sales force and I had a sales manager, so it was a much bigger operation, which allowed me to focus more on the uh, on those things, you know. So this time it's funny because I have two good friends of mine that partnered with me, um, and they're like, "Oh, when are we going to get the media exposure?" When are, you know, because I haven't called in any favors or any editorial. So I've actually done very little to promote it. All I can say is I think we got a great team that really represents us as a brand phenomenally. And actually, to that effect, at the trade show, you guys would come by and they're like, "God, this is a great cigar." Then they come by two days later and they'd be like, "You're the coolest fucking company here," and I'm like. Thanks. Why? <laughs> like, you guys just have a synergy amongst you. That's awesome. And we actually, this weekend, we were at the Little Smoke up in Spokane, Washington, and we had four or five guys come by and compliment just the two or three guys that were there with us. So I think a lot of it is on is on the shoulders of the people that work with us. We're all friends. Um, we don't yell. We don't get mad. You know. And even I've had, like, Jeremy screwed up last week, and then Glenn, my guy in the South, screwed up the week before. And it's like, what can you learn from that is our approach. So I think people walk in stores smiling, proud to work with us. And I say with, not for, because they work with us. And I think that has a big effect on the consumer. And I think our, our, our branding and our packaging, I always say anything that you sell, it's like a woman. You don't walk down the street and go, God damn, that woman looks so sweet. It doesn't fucking happen. So the first thing that happens is you say, damn, she's hot. And that's packaging. So that brings you to the table. Then you ask her out. You take her to dinner. If she's an idiot or an airhead, it's probably going to be a one-night dinner. If she's really smart and all these things, then you keep taking her out. And that's kind of the idea with my cigars. It's like I have to be flashy or different with my packaging. And I try to have all my boxes are as classic as you can get in terms of uh, the actual container. But to have a very different approach to the artwork, which is going to cause attention and get people talking, but then the cigars have to line up. If not, they'll never try them again. And there's plenty of guys out there that have brilliant packaging with shit cigars. And there's plenty of guys out there that have great cigars with shit packaging. So I think it's kind of that combination. I think that we did a good job with our team and with kind of hitting on the head the, uh, the marketing approach that the brand has on its own, you know. Can I Rick. add to that? Go yeah. for it. You made a comment about how uh, on the forums that we've been blowing up and you were kind of asking the reasons behind it. And it's been such a, an incredible thing to see uh, on a daily basis, whether it's through blogs or people reaching out to each one of us individually, me, just while I'm in a shop, a customer talking to me, we've done nothing for marketing. And that's the beautiful thing about this, is it really is a true like grassroots, where it's been the consumer that has been building this brand for us. And they're talking about it to their friends, and it's just caught like wildfire. And it's a very humbling, but very cool experience to be a part of a brand that people are identifying with and it, it's it's they like the cigars they like the company you know uh, one of the things Robert left out is while we were in Spokane we got asked to multiple people's houses after to go on a pontoon boat to go cliff diving they just wanted to hang out and you had all these other companies that are great companies manufacturers there and we had a huge group around us of just people hanging out because they just were having a good time with us. We're sharing bottles of bourbon together. We're drinking. We're smoking. And it's just been a cool experience because we're just representing us, you know, and hopefully we're doing a good job of that. And it seems to be so that people are responding to it. And they're essentially building the brand for us. So it's a, like it's an amazing thing to see. It's kind of a early day 
Drew Estate vibe that you guys kind of have, you know, Thank you. the early days of Drew Estate when it was just starting and they were. Yeah, and that's another point that's very interesting. All the big, all the big little guys out there, whether it's Room 101, Drew Estate, Tatuaje, you never know how you're going to be approached by brands like that because we don't see ourselves like people ask me in the beginning, they're like, who are you going after? And I'm like, nobody, I'm going right down the middle. So I don't think, you know, a lot of the smaller brands that come out, they come out with a rock star or a motorcycle or change. A lot of guys go down these these avenues, and we came out very differently. And it was interesting because I, I got on the airplane to fly to Las Vegas. First guy that, that, that I saw on the plane was Jonathan Drew. Got up, give me a hug, love what you're doing. How can I help? I'm like, hey, man, thanks. I get to the show. Dion's like, hey, love what you're doing. How can I help? You know, mm -hmm. Pete, same way. Matt, Matt's a great friend of mine. He's introduced me to a dozen accounts. And so we've had a lot of that participation too, which is, I mean, I don't think we'd be, we might be close to where we are, but we wouldn't be where we are without the help of a lot of the other companies. And we've had, I don't want to go through the list, but I'll, at least five big companies also trying to help us. And it's just very cool to have our, uh, an industry that seems so kind of elbowing each other in the stomach be so supportive of what we're doing. And that's been just really a blessing to us as well. So I think a lot of it is consumer driven, as, as Jeremy said, which is amazing. But then we have had a lot of help. I mean, we have reps all the time that we bump into on the road and we go to a sales call and the guy's like, no, I'm not interested or maybe later or next month. And then the rep or the owner will be like, are you fucking kidding me? You need to order this shit now. So we've had a lot of push from other from other companies helping us, which has been really cool. It's a very collaborative in industry. It really is. You hear stories all the time of people reaching out to help other companies. Yeah, yeah and I don't think there's very many industries out there that really do that. I mean, you don't see Coke help and Pepsi, that's for damn sure. But right. the cigar industry is uh, full of a bunch of people who just you know love the hobby and, and want to see it grow. And um, I think we're definitely in a cigar boom um, for sure. I mean, I think I see that. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure what the numbers say. I think they do say that, but um, I agree. And I think that we're attracting much different... Uh, the next generation of smoker, which is good, because I think smokers are getting a little bit younger, and I think that the boutique brands and kind of the more hip market has helped to create that, which is great, because if they instead became non-cigar smokers, then you have a very short-lived industry out there, or you know, a, an industry with a shorter life. But it's interesting, because I see even in my peer group, a lot of guys that don't smoke, not because I make them, but uh, because they get genuinely interested in trying them. And that's cooler because I can say five years ago I didn't see that, you know. Right, right. I think, I think if, we ha if we're having a boom, it's only going to grow because smokers are getting, you know, I think probably a majority of the growth in my mind would be 25 to 35-year-old age range. Those guys will keep smoking forever. And then if you're attracting that 25, 35 range, you know, we can build the market a bit. What are your thoughts on the uh, impending FDA ruling? <sighs> you know, I obviously very strongly disagree with FDA regulation of any sort. All I can say is I got my asshole really tight. Mm -hmm. They have to say so. I mean, we have a lot to lose, as do, do most other brands out there, uh, based on what you're looking at on, on terms of what, how they say they regulate. Um, I think it affects everybody. I think it's an awful thing. Um, and I mean, I don't think there's anything to say outside of that. It, it, it hurts everybody, helps nobody, except for maybe a couple big, you know, yeah. guys. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you guys for, for coming on the show. That wraps up about our segment here for the last third. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to say, man, I dig the smoke. It's a great smoke. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to trying the other two. Who is your rep here in Texas? Tom Poehler. Okay. No, Tom, Tom Poehler. Okay. We'll have to have a talk with Tom. Yeah, he's <laughs> actually he's got a big fucking box. Yeah, that's about to go out too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely have to have a talk with Tom then. Yeah, thank you guys, <laughs> thank you guys for coming in and talking to us. A big thanks to uh, to Jeremy and Robert from Caldwell thank Cigars. You. Guys, thank you. All right, later, guys. All right, so it was nice talking to those guys from yeah, Caldwell cool. Cigars. Yeah, they really way cool. cool. He had like a million uh, bands on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like people with flair. Yeah, he definitely yeah. had flair. Yeah. yeah, and the other guy had an epic beard. Which yes, is he awesome. Did. And he was in Hawaii. Damn it. Yeah. I don't That's know if he's nice. really. Do you think he's really in Hawaii? I don't know. I don't know. He was I'm just, just saying gonna, that. I'm just going to say. You're going to go with it? I'm going to go, with, go it. with it. Okay, makes, cool. Makes it cooler. Yeah. So, as always, check us out on the normal places you can find us iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podomatic, Podcast Land, Facebook, Twitter, 
and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And don't forget to add us on the Facebook at Clipso Cigar Review, and you can also add Clipso Cigar Shop and Lounge. The Facebook, huh? The Facebook. The, the Facebook. Facebook. Uh, you can find us on uh, at Calypso Cigar Rev on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I'm at Randy Rankin 43. At Cigar Deet Nate. Correct. At Captain Funky Pants. And as always, it's been great smoking with you. See you later, fellas. See you later. Manja. <laughs>